There was a time when the idea of peace in Northern Ireland seemed like a naive and truly unattainable dream. Endlessly, our people gathered their strength to face another day. And they never stopped encouraging their leaders to find the courage to resolve this situation so that our children could look to the future with a smile of hope. Trouble today, you're no, only putting your people in more trouble. My dad had a couple of heroes. Abraham Lincoln was a hero of his. His own dad was, who was a great label leader. Um, but John Hume was a modern day saint and a hero of, of my dad's. John Hume's singular vision of peace recognized the critical need for international intervention in the terrible and bloody conflict which threatened to ruin the island of Ireland. To this end, and inspired by Martin Luther King's civil rights movement, he made the first of his many visits to the U.S. in 1969, where he befriended many U.S. congressmen, most crucially the Four Horsemen. But it was Tip O'Neill, one of the most powerful and respected men in the U.S., with whom John formed a particularly strong bond. He believed that John Hume was the Martin Luther King of Ireland um, and, and was a symbol for the age, and that if peace were to come about, the, the, everything was coming in alignment, the oceans, the suns, and the stars, and it was because of John Hume. And, and he, he, he viewed John Hume as a true leader, intuitively a leader. Sharing the same values and ideals, these two men developed a deep and enduring friendship and a natural affinity for the northwest of Ireland, John's birthplace and Tip's ancestral home. Fundamental to both men, was their commitment and vision for creating a better way of life for all the people they served. O'Neill was enormously impressed by Hume. Uh, I would say more impressed by Hume than almost anybody in politics that he ever met. And the relationship there was immediate and enormously warm and O'Neill couldn't do enough for Hume. It was a very important personal relationship as well as a very important political relationship. The Northern Irish conflict was always a deep-rooted emotional issue for Tip. He believed the situation was intolerable and was instrumental in helping John effect a significant change in how the Northern Irish situation was viewed, not only by Irish-American politicians, but also crucially by the White House. John also, I think, very importantly, represented an alternative to what was perceived to be an argument that only violence could attain Irish unity. And he was prepared to take that to a new level of discourse and to say, I represent the tradition of King and Gandhi, and we can achieve the same end absent violence. He would speak to anybody who could save a life. Um, and his argument was there are 20,000 soldiers on the streets. They haven't done anything to further the situation. If I can save one life by talking to somebody, I certainly will do it. Irish-American members of Congress came to realize that their voice could make a difference in the peace process or the peace that could ultimately evolve in Northern Ireland. And it was made up by Hugh Carey, uh, Patrick Moynihan, Ted Kennedy, and my dad. And, uh, and, and they spoke out on the issues and held firm on the issues and gathered strength on the issues. And over time, their voice not only made its way across the Atlantic to Ireland, but it also made its way to other members of Congress to uh, the, the Irish citadels of America and the, the traditional news outlets in those, in those areas as well. So people began in a holistic sense to pay attention to you know, these members of Congress that were, that were listening to John Hume and listening to the peace voice of, of Northern Ireland called to them. 
And so the combined energy and passion of these two men drove forward the process that would change Ireland forever and create the greatest of Irish-American legacies. Countless lives have been saved and profoundly changed as a result of the peace process in Northern Ireland. Now is the time to celebrate and honour this extraordinary legacy of the Irish-American relationship and share its valuable lessons with the rest of the world. The University of Ulster will do this by establishing the John Hume and Thomas P. O'Neill Chair in Peace at the McGee campus in Derry. The chair, the most senior academic position, will be based at the university's world-renowned and internationally acclaimed Peace and Conflict Centre in Derry. It will equip a new generation of peace builders across the globe and lead work on building peace for future generations. I think it's very appropriate that there should be a chair in peace studies in the names of Tip O'Neill and John Hume at the University of Ulster. No more appropriate setting where people can come and learn, hopefully learn, from the past. While peace has transformed Northern Ireland, it is still evolving. It is fragile. It must be nurtured, nourished and embedded. The John Hume and Thomas P. O'Neill Chair in Peace will acknowledge this challenge. It will celebrate all that has been achieved and recognise the work still to be undertaken to ensure that the vision of these two great men is fully realised. And I will now end with a quotation of total hope. The words of a former laureate, one of my great heroes of this century, Martin Luther King Jr. We shall overcome. Thank you.